The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. The great problem in our today's Christendom is that we really do not have the fear of Jehovah upon us. If we would make a fear of Jehovah as our life, as our principle, as our breath, we wouldn't have ended up in apostasy, the realm of spreading the cancer to the third and final stage. We would have easily put an end to this apostasy by giving number one criteria for Bible doctrine in the pulpits. We would have fearlessly communicated the word of the Lord more accurately under the dispensing technique of dispensations over the principle of isagogical, categorical, and exegetical explanation of the word. But the trends that we are going through and learning through and looking through is of not possible for us as such. We are been considering the useless and worthless things as our number one criteria. What are we considering the useless and worthless things as number one criteria? Is that we are not aware that what we are going to do our work without the mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, without rightly dividing the word of the Lord, is useless and worthless, and which shall be burnt off because this is the energy that you are going to build up in the human flesh. And this energy, what you have been built up in the human flesh, demands would be unstable. But whereas the divine energy demands gold, silver, and precious stones. The highway of holiness wherewith our Lord causes us to walk through the millennium demands that it is a highway of holiness. Purely those men who are having the subjection to the entire condensation of the old sin nature when it has lost the sovereign power over us at the moment of salvation by faith alone in Christ alone and we, the believers in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, reign through the spiritual resurrection. Wherewith, while we are still alive physically in this earth, we can attain that spiritual resurrection, provided we can give number one criteria for Bible doctrine. Without being given number one criteria for Bible doctrine, it is highly impossible for us to reign into the spiritual resurrection, wherewith our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has called us to the praise of His glory. But today, the church has lost the private principle. The church has lost the spiritual maturity. The church has lost concentration to tell upon the spiritual resurrection. Above all, the church has lost to tell what are the five crowns that they're going to be getting for you at the judgment seat of Christ. They are not in a place to understand, to make you to realize what is the truth that we have to go through. They are not in a position to cause you to think and to realize what it is that we have been handling around in our hands is more important than the vain speculations of your thoughts, of your thinking, that you can do some charity works, you can do this, you can do that. And concentrate upon calling yourself as a missionary country and not giving the word of the Lord number one criteria, but rather giving any other substitute apart from the word of the Lord. In my country like India, we have been supported by the other foreign aids. And the correct syndrome for AIDS, which is deficiency syndrome, wherewith you don't capable of having, and eventually they die out. The same aid has been there for the past teachers in this country. Not physically the term as AIDS, but no difference between the AIDS and the aid what they get along. This foreign aid which is supposed to get the pastor, where with the missionary term, he has to send the word of the Lord and give books to them. 
the pastors who are there in the other country, they are sending to these so-called pastors who act themselves as if they are useless, as if they are orphans, as if they are very poor, as if they have don't have any source of income. So from your foreign country, you need to send to me monthly check, monthly check of so many dollars, monthly check of so much help. And they even tell, why can't we do some cattle farming? Why can't we do this business? Why can't we do that charity work? Why can't we purchase some property and give for them? And some morons, they want to construct as if they have been getting some clients from other country and they want to help the poor people over here who are handicapped who are this, who are that, I don't deny that they have to do it. They can do it provided, number one, you give them a strong maturity in the word of the Lord. Without maturity, you cannot lean upon them. When you as a missionary in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you have come here, you cannot provide those silly substitutes wherewith even in my country like India, they are unbelievers who are easily more effectively working than you because your pastor can take some of the amount from that, some of the percentage of that, and he can give only, or he may not give the full amount or he may even give only a 5% of that what he has got out of 100%. Dear brethren, but the the foreigners the who have been sending the aid, they will think they are really helping the poor people. But they aren't helping the poor people. The mediator has taken all the credit. As such, Satan does when miracles and healings takes all the credits to this person without having the intention of Lord God, the work working directly to that recipient who is in need of that miracle or healing. The mediator, how he takes the credit, exactly this mediator who has represented pastor, who has been representing for the work like equipping India with XYZ deeds have taken the credit and they are enjoying literally the work of their life, of the work of their hands, the work of their pleasure, which is nothing but aid. And they're not capable of understanding what is this aid and aids in the difference. AIDS has been purchased by his own lust pattern. But here the aid has been purchased by a pastor who doesn't lose it till to the point of his death because he needs to constantly produce fake reports. He needs to constantly produce fake things and tell constantly lies upon lies upon lies, telling that I have been here, I have been there, I have done this work. See, I have sent you so many photos. So you send me your monthly help. Dear brethren, how pathetic this man they are. And they tell they are really working on the missionary, but they aren't working on the missionary, but they are working out for their own belly with fake reports and leading further into apostasy, rejecting the word of the Lord more clearly, more accurately, which has to be communicated, and telling those things wherewith Bible doctrine has no value at all for them. Dear brethren, if you are being a missionary, and if you have been interested to send some men who can be a real missionaries to my country, send Bible doctrine, don't send any monetary help to these people. The people that are with they are been there, they are really rejecting, misleading the proper help wherewith they could in return effectively train them up not doing those things they are in return doing for the poor of the people, not really for the poor of the people, but they are first gathering themselves the real wealth, the real wealth, and they are in a state of position of enjoying upon the name of the Lord, and wherewith the missionary is not been sent here to enjoy, but rather he has sent with a serious dedication in rightly dividing the word of truth, evangelizing the country, teaching them Bible realm, and give them in return that this base for which has come, this country could in return go for the missionary activity. During the period when Apostle Paul is writing to Thessalonians and those men, they were already good believers, but they are dull believers. They couldn't go again out as a missionary to the other countries, to the other parts of the world. They couldn't go and tell them what was the truth. They just were sitting idle and they were happy to enjoy the word of the Lord. But that work today is not possible, dear brethren. Each and every believer has been called for the perfection and completion in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Each believer has been called to the praise of the glory of our Lord God Almighty. How? Because he has been given a royal ambassadorship. And what is the work of a royal ambassadorship? The work of a royal ambassadorship is very great and very clear and very true. The work of a royal ambassadorship is to represent our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to the maximum. And each and every believer is a royal ambassador. He cannot wait only for the missionary to come so that he can go and tell the things to him, but rather in the privacy of his royal ambassadorship, he has to tell the truth. 
Dear brethren, whether you believe the simple truths or not, it is left to you. But the one who is sending foreign aid, they have to be very much cautious. It is not the money that has been required over here. Send them the information. Send them the truth of reality. So, dear brethren, sending money and spoiling my country is not a big thing. Do not judge them by the eyes that you can look, by the ears that you have heard. But judge them a righteous judgment. Give them the true word of Lord. That should be the true fear of Jehovah. And that should be the true scent wherewith Lord delights in us. A righteous judgment will be not to give them constantly and providing water for them whenever they ask. But in return, put a bore well for them and ask them to dig the water themselves by playing their hand to dig it out. Dear brethren, we are here not to help the helpless, but rather we are here to help those who are really helpless in the word of the Lord and give the missionary work so that the Lord can in return develop them like James Watt developed in my country like India, the first steam engine. Dear brethren, we are here to tell to you in simple words the pivot that could be found with the knowledge of Bible doctrine could be earned and learned only through the scent and the fear of Jehovah. And if our scent is not in the fear of Jehovah, then Lord help you. You may not correct by listening to this tape as well. Because when once you have been acquainted with the aid and thinking that you are doing great things, you will never be differentiated from the disease of AIDS, far less you can think the reality in Christ. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. In the next step, we shall continue our discourse. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that thou hast given to our fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us in these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.